Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at height maps in twin motion. Now, you might think, well, we've always had kind of the bump maps and this normal maps in twin motion, but as of 2021, twin motion 2021, we did not actually have access to adding and manipulating height maps, specifically height maps. So in this video, we will cover that. But first, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, with which I hope you do, like, come on, that's why we're here, then please demolish that like button. It really helps me out very much. Okay, so I am just in a basic, out of the box, brand new Twin Motion project. And what we're gonna do is just add material. We're gonna start and add material. So let's use a brick. And I like to show this with bricks because we can really start to see a big difference, mainly because there is already a built-in height difference between kind of the brick and mortar. So what we want to do is just really any of these bricks will work. But I'm, I want to point out I'm starting with a twin motion material first. And we'll, we'll look at the others and see how this works out. So I'm going to just throw in this clean brick. And I'm going to move up here. And we can see, you know, it, it's not bad. It's looking pretty good already. Uh, it, it does have some of this built in and turned on already. But I want to show you where you can find height mass specifically. So we have all of our color maps. We have our reflection scale, whatever. That's all fine, but within the settings, we can see we have bump, and we're very we're very much used to seeing that, and we we know what bump does already. But whenever I hit more, we can see there's my normal map, which is really what's doing, kind of more or less everything when it comes to the height and really giving us the detail uh, in contrast between one part one part being high and one part being not. But with the addition of height maps within 2021, we can see that there's this parallax option. So. If you're familiar with parallax at all, you've probably seen it when it comes to websites and and how you can get some kind of artificial dimension between some elements. And it usually has to do with kind of multiple images stacked or just an effect that's added. And the parallax effect itself is that, that extra dimension. And it's not that we're, in this case, using a different map. It's just using the normal map. But the addition of the height map allows the, the parallax to push and pull and to get more dimensionality from these materials that we wouldn't normally have with just the normal map. So the parallax being on, we can see on versus off. We can kind of see a slight difference, and you know, it does look better with it on. We do have that extra dimension. If I stop it here, we can see uh, the distance between the grout and the edge of the brick itself is very minimal, whereas whenever I turn this on, we can see that there's an, a, we get that extra dimension. It's hard, really hard to explain without uh, really going into parallax here and showing you more. So whenever I click on more, we can see there's my height map, and then there's my intensity. And now the intensity is very low, and this is intensity will differ between every twin motion material because of, you know, it's, it's different for every material, and that's good. So the height map here that we're worried about is already built in because it's a twin motion material and we'll get to the other materials. But like I said before, a 5% intensity is pretty low. Now I want to move this up and down and show you what the additional parallax, what more intense parallax looks like. So as I bring this up, we can see, yeah, we get more, a more dramatic distance between the grout and the edge of the brick. Now this is not actually changing or like, giving us extra depth because if I come over here to the side we can see it's still just flat now parallax itself is just giving us that illusion that it is not flat like not completely flat so with that we can see I'm gonna I'm just gonna make this even more dramatic and we can really start to see what's going on now this looks absolutely terrible and absurd at certain angles so if I'm straight on it's it's really not that bad I can start to see those individual bricks and it's like very prominent. Those are individual bricks. Now, whenever I get close, I could see, well, I'm seeing this almost distortion. Now I'm going to turn my speed down so I can move in a bit closer without running into the wall. So we can see that as I get closer, we start to see like almost multiple versions of the texture. And that is, in a sense, the parallax being pushed a bit too far because parallax is all it's doing is taking this map you know, the settings from this map and applying that color map multiple times. In this case, it's applying it multiple times to the point where we can actually see the next one and the next one and the next one. So we don't really want that. Obviously, this is way too intense for this material. So whenever I bring this down, we can start to see, you know, we, we start to get a little closer to it looking more like one brick that is pushed back farther than that. Even 18 is too high in this case because we can see kind of the layers and we don't want to see that, which is why, you know, getting down to really under 10% is probably where we want to go. So whenever I get to about 10%, we could start to barely see these layers. So maybe that 5% was kind of perfect. We could maybe push it to eight, but really 
uh, the five to eight percent is probably where we want to go with this material. Now, I'm not saying you can't go beyond that, but it's really up to you. You'll really you will have to get up close to really notice some of these layers once you uh, move that intensity higher. Now, with that said, we, we've looked at the height map and what it, I mean, really, this is the height map. Height map is just going to be black and white. And again, the wider values are more uh, higher in a sense. They're higher out, whereas the black is pushed farther back. And we can see that whenever we in, increase the intensity, th those darker portions of the grout are really being pushed back farther. Okay, so that is a twin motion material. Now, I, the next thing I want to look at is a quixel material. So the mega scans surface, let's come down to brick because again, we want to keep this uh, fairly consistent and you know, I can make it rough, whatever. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and go with something like this, this worn brick facade. And so I'm just going to drag this in. I've already downloaded it. And there we go. And so I'll back up just a bit so we can get an idea. So it does look like a really good looking material. So it's really nice. And so again, we're going to come all the way to the settings and then the bump is hundred percent. We can, you can see what doing, yeah, changing that from 100% does. So we, I like it at 100 because we can really see the depth and shadows that we want. If we click on more, I can see there's a normal map, but you'll notice the parallax is off. And now I'm going to come, before I turn on, I'm going to come in here to more and we're going to see that there apparently is a height map applied and it's set to 50%. So let's come over here and turn this on. And immediately you could see that it, it's kind of pushed back. Now, remember, this is not moving from the same plane that this primitive object is placed on or that the, it's placed on the primitive object, it, the, the object itself is not moving. It's just the brick with this added parallax effect being on versus off. So immediately, there's not much difference that we could see, but there's just ever so slightly. So with it on, I'm going to come in here and see that there is a height map. And it looks like it's, it literally is for the material, and that's cool. Now, this is where the difference between twin motion materials and quixel materials come into play. And I wish it worked differently and it's almost like it should work the same, but it doesn't. So you'll look at the intensity here being at 50. And as I move this, we're not getting a giant effect, a giant difference in the depth from the edge of the brick to the back or like the edge of the grout. We are getting more of like this whole material is getting pushed in or pushed out. Now there is, I'll show you where to look here. And it's, it almost ends up being like at the edge of some of these grout lines. As I move this out, we can see, yeah, everything gets pushed back out or appears to be pushed back out. But the main thing is that we do get a little bit of extra in here. We do get a little bit of extra. Now, I'm not sure what the purpose of, I'm not sure why these quicksilver materials won't do not function the exact same way. But you'll notice we do get some more effect with this parallax being on and having it be more intense. And the difference I'm trying to point out here is that you know, moving this, I have to move the intensity like almost all the way to be able to get that little bit of extra distance. And I don't know why that is. It just, you know, it happens to be with the Quixel materials. That's just the case. Um, the also, the thing to be aware of here is it, if we look at this straight on, it's, it is not affecting the scale, which is great. That, that would be a problem if it were, but it is affecting these edges and you'll see, I, I get more or less grout. And it's just because of how the parallax is working. It's I'm showing let I'm getting less of the grout as I make this more intense. So I'm ending up at least from, from the side angle, because uh, depending on where you look, the greater the parallax, the, the different it's going to look at, at these sides. So with 0%, I can come to the side and I see the exact same thing. Now, if I put this all the way up to 100%, you can see as I come to the side, I get this weird kind of push in in push out effect. And I'm, I'm in a sense seeing more of this grout or less of this grout depending on the angle. And that's, all, and that's just because the effect is so dramatic. So another reason why I don't want to put that kind of all the way, uh, a middle ground is for a quicksilver material or anything like that is probably about the 50% because I do get a little bit of the effect. And if you are this close, you know, you are seeing a bit of uh, weirdness going on and that we're seeing less or more of the material based on the angle that we're looking at the corner. But I will say it, it looks pretty good. Like, and, and from really from a few feet away from a slight distance, you're, you're getting more of the effect that you want. And that's kind of the point here, but maybe 50% is pretty good because it's the default and it just happens to be that way. Now, okay. We've looked at twin motion materials. We looked at quixel materials, but let's now look at making our own material because that is going to apply all the same as well. Now I'm not going to use a brick. I'm going to use something slightly different. But what I want to do is come in here and go ahead and just make a new material. So I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to start with this blank material. I'm going to go ahead and just add the new material. 
and this is going to end up being a carpet. So what I'm going to do is come into my color and change this texture to one of my own. In this case, I have this carpet here. I'm going to use this color map right there. And so, okay, it's looking fine. It looks like carpet, uh, but I have no dimensionality. I have nothing like that, but we haven't added any other map but the color. So let's come back here, reflection, whatever, 10%, not a huge deal. I will come in here and then I'll take advantage of this and add my ambient occlusion, which is not going to do much because it's mostly white. There are very few places that aren't completely white, but that's fine. I'll come into my settings and I like to do this with my own materials and I find that it doesn't make a huge difference, but I want to go ahead and turn the metalness on and you'll see metalness on. Why would you do that? Well, I would do that because I'm going to end up adding my own roughness map and that will then change the look based on the actual roughness and not just turning the metal on or off. So with it on or off, I get this generic looking, I mean, it's just generic. We don't even know what it is, but my guess is it's completely white in that everything is metal, where in this case it's carpet, so not everything is metal. So I want to make sure and add my roughness map because that's going to really tell Twinmotion where where my roughness is. In this case, it's it's mostly white. So I want to keep my metalness down, but you'll notice the difference between off versus on. I really get a more vibrant image and it's it's pulling from this roughness, which is really, it's accounting for the fact that it's carpet and not a metal. So I do like the look there. Keep your reflectance, reflectivity down, uh, obviously because you know it's carpet and it's not going to be reflecting that much. But anyways, with that said, we're going to get to the bump, and this is really what we care about for this video. So when I come into the bump, I can see a normal map. Well, obviously, we want to add our normal. So I'm going to go ahead and click open. We're going to add our normal map. And with that, we can see a really nice uh, change in the dimension. We can see, you know, it looks pretty good. You know, and to get an example of what it would look like with a normal map and without, at this point, we can come to bump and then move this down. And, you know, we can really, like, our ambient occlusion is working. We can see the slight difference in how the light's hitting it. And we get some extra dimensionality. So we want that bump at 100% because I like that. It looks good. And so when I come into parallax, it's it's just using this generic height map and all this. So when I turn this on, really nothing is going to happen at this point. And even with this intensity of 50%, because it's pulling from, like, nothing. It's just this generic placeholder. So what I want to do is go ahead and add my height map. So let's go ahead and open. And then there's my height. And you'll notice this is fairly different depending on the material or like the the particular color of the material. And that's, that's that may be the way the carpet is where it's slightly higher in some place, slightly not. But it's really just getting more of the detail out of the normal map at this point. So when I add this, we can see we do get some pretty dramatic looking kind of waves. And that's all to do with the parallax. So when I come over here and turn parallax off everything's get it gets pretty flat again like there's not much to look at here but whenever i turn this on we can start to see some of those undulations that is completely due to this height map that we have applied within our parallax now i think 50 percent for this is way too high because i don't want to like accidentally get to the side and see what this would look like on like this wavy carpet now i'm going ahead and add a a plane because i want to see this on the ground or in fact we can just add this to our starting plane right here so as we can see here, it it is pretty wavy, <laughs> and it's obviously not tiled all that well. Uh, but we do want to focus on what we're seeing as far as the the parallax and those waviness. It, you can see more of it here on the side because we're looking like literally directly at the side. We're not you know on the ground looking at it from the side. But you'll notice as I increase this so much more, we can see like there's almost this giant cave this kind giant concave portion in the carpet which is completely incorrect because as i move up here we could see it's actually flat i i don't want that look at all which all that tells me is that it's too intense of course it's way too intense uh, i do want this effect but i don't want it that intense so i will bring this you know really pretty close to zero because i don't want it like really that dramatic and so this is giving me more of the effect that i want especially from the side view i can see there's a slight difference in uh, the carpet depending on where it is what kind of color it is whatever and but it's not completely 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 fat, flat because every material that you, even in the real world if, if it's something like carpet is not going to be completely flat even though it appears to be which is why i want to put it at just five percent which is just barely off of zero it gives it that much more dimensionality and i think looks so much better so we, what we've looked at in this video is the difference between adding the height maps and what they do, period, but the difference between twin motion materials, quixel materials, and then making our own. 
uh, you'll see that it looks like making our own material ends up reacting a bit more like the twin motion material and that we get such a dramatic change in the look and that's you know that's fine it's good to know that we have a lot more that we can work with uh, because it actually is reacting with our height map which is awesome with the quicksilver materials i can't edit the height map like i want it to because it's just pulling in the material with everything kind of there uh, but that's okay uh, we just have to know this which is why i wanted to make this video and that you know using the quicksilver materials you have a little less that you can do as far as getting that extra height that extra parallax effect so that will do it for this video if you happen to learn something which i sure hope you did please please demolish that like button it really helps me out very very much and let me know if you have any questions about these height maps or what they can do or how to apply them i have plenty of other videos on how to make materials and deal with materials uh, within twin motion so please check those out but yeah that'll do it for this video i hope you have a wonderful day thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next one